of Knit Podcast. My name is Linda and I'm coming to you from just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia in a sunny and cold South Surrey. So welcome everybody. I'm so happy to be sitting here chatting with you again today. I have a fun episode planned. At least I think it's a lot of fun. First of all, celebrating quite a few things today. Definitely a new year. Absolutely happy new year. I've said that before already. Um, four years of podcasting. I cannot believe it. My four year podiversary was actually in November, but completely missed it. I don't know, just got busy, forgot all about it. So hey, celebrating that it deserves an honorable mention. And this year denotes the year in which I will celebrate six decades on the planet. That requires a bit of thought. <laughs> but we're also celebrating today the end of the Merry Mini Mal 23, which was the joint make along that Susan of Wild Cottage Ireland Knitting and I hosted. So we're going to draw the winners for that and I'll get that to that at the beginning. So for those of you that are just hanging around for the prizes, no harm, no foul. Totally awesome. I will share that with you. I think I have five prizes to give, five or six prizes to give away, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so excited about that. Then what I thought I would do is go through um, my intentions for the year. Well, sorry, what my intentions were for 2023. It's more of a 2023 wrap up, but I'm going to break it up into two parts. Because as much as I love talking, and you know I, you all know I love talking about knitting and all things fiber, I don't think you want to listen to me for three hours. So I thought I would break it up into two different segments. One would be just my main knit, so basically the sweaters that I knit last year, and just the high level, uh, what I love about them, and maybe what I would do different, if anything. Just share share that. I thought that would be kind of fun. Um, and then I thought I would break out the other garment knitting into a separate, because I have a whole bunch of miscellaneous stuff uh, that I really want to share with you. And so I thought I would break that out into a separate video. And then I'm also going to do what's what's up for me in 2024. You know, I'm, I don't want to over plan 2024. I definitely planned a lot in 2023. And I think it just kind of all went out the window. I <laughs> just sort of willy nilly went forward and uh, it turned out to be what it is. And it was a lot of fun and I wouldn't change a thing, but I thought I would share all of that wonderful goodness with you. And what else can I say? Why don't I start with what I'm wearing? I know this is, this is actually um, one of the garments that I made in 2023, actually. It's actually, I finished it in 2024, but I'm claiming it as 2023. So this was my Stripes by Andrea Maori, And you all saw, those of you that were following me through Vlogmas, you saw me knitting this furiously <laughs> throughout the Christmas uh, holidays. But this was my Legacy Fiber Arts um, advent from a year or two ago. I'm not even sure anymore. And I used all 12 minis. This little band around the neck and this band, these bands around the sleeves are a separate mini. It wasn't actually a mini, it was actually a skein and I used very, very little of it. Literally, it's five rows of ribbing on the cuffs and on the neckline and that was it. So I can't even tell you, it was a very minimal amount of yarn. But of the 12 mini skeins that I used, and notice it is, it's hard for you to tell, but it's just at my hip bones. So it's not cropped, but it's just at my hip bones, which is kind of nice. Um, and a three quarter length sleeve. And it is relatively fitted. It's, I made it for the 40 inch bust. So there's just normal zero ease, but it worked out perfect. This is what I have left. Of all 12 mini skeins, this is what I have left and I've made it into a magic ball that's going to go into my granny stripe blanket, but that's it. So 12 mini skeins, if that's what you have, 
you can actually knit a sweater. And this was also my entry, not that I can win prizes, but this was my entry into the Merry Mini Mal. So FYI, if you have 12 mini skeins, you can knit a sweater. <laughs> I'm just saying. Might have to be short sleeves or whatever, but you know, you can knit a sweater, which is kind of fun. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about three quarter length sleeves. I've never, I don't make sweaters with this sleeve length. And so I feel the edge of the sleeve. So not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> so, but I love it. I have worn this so much. Um, what I would say is I think I really do like a fingering weight sweater. This is fingering weight sock yarn. I mean, it's, it's sock yarn and it feels fantastic. It is warm, but light. And I forget sometimes how nice fingering weight yarn is in a garment. Um, it obviously, I gotta stop saying them. It obviously, you know, decay and worsted or faster knits. This definitely takes longer to knit, but I really do like the feel of this sweater. Anyway, that was garment number one. We're, I digressed already. I have digressed. <laughs> so why don't we go right into, um, why don't we right, go right into the Merry Minnie Mel prizes? So if you recall, we cast on, the contest went from April, uh, August 15th all the way until January 6th. November 30th, I think, was a cutoff date for was it October 31st or November? Pardon me, November 5th was a cutoff date for the first round of prizes. And so we issued some prizes for the first section. And then now we're going to do the final prizes for um, the January 6th cutoff. And everybody qualifies. Nobody had to finish anything. I don't think you can get an easier <laughs> make along than this one. The only requirement was that you used a minimum of two mini skeins. And Anything else other than that, it was a free for all. So thank you to everybody who participated. We had more than 100 participants in, in the Merry Minnie Mal. So to me, that was a huge success. And we have some great prizes. So I am just going to share with you who the prize winners are. So let's go to the winners. All right, this is so exciting. Where should I start? Okay, we'll just start from the beginning. So you were able to post on Instagram and you were able to post on Facebook. So I'm covering them all. We had, I think, 110 on Facebook and 111, no, pardon me, 111 on Facebook and 110 on Instagram. And so I just did random number generators and let's get started. This is so much fun. Okay, so from Instagram, we had numbers 105, number four, and number 37. So who are you? 104, you are winning Timber Yarns. And so this is the Christmas, uh, this is from my stash, 12 Days of Christmas, uh, 2021 Advent Socks, they're not Advent Socks, they're self-striping socks from Timber Yarns. I had ordered an extra skein, so I'm happy to be gifting this. And that was to Auntie Karen. So Auntie Karen, uh, for all winners, please either email me at for the fun of knit vlog, and that's knit with two T's at the fun of knit vlog at gmail.com. Is it with two T's? Check the spelling below. I don't even remember now. Or direct message me uh, under the for fun of knit with two T's on Instagram. Definitely two T's on Instagram and with your details and I will mail those out to you. So that was Auntie Karen, Auntie underscore Karen. Um, the next prize is this, I do believe it's a Knitter's Pride. It is a pattern holder and it has all the magnetic pieces to it. It's got a little pouch and it comes with a pen and that is going to Miss Sholia. Miss Sholia, so please, and I'll put the name down there, Miss Sholia, if you can also either direct message me and, or sorry for the glare, guys, uh, direct message me or email me, that would be terrific. The next prize that is going out is to, now, I have an apology to make here. 
Some folks weren't on Instagram, nor were they on Ravelry. So they sent me emails with a photograph of their project and I posted it for them. I since have deleted one of those emails because I cannot find it. So I'm going to put a picture up here of the project that won that I posted on Instagram. And the, the project was the chocolate berries wrap. So it was BC chocolate berries wrap. And I seem to think the name was Barbara or Brenda or Beverly. It started with a B. So I apologize, but please, if you're watching this or if anybody knows this person from this photo up here, please let them know that they won. They have won a mini skein set, which I hope you can see it. It's beautiful reds and grays and some uh, mix and tonals, as well as the ancient and ancient arms gnome project project bag so that is a gnome kit literally <laughs> so that is the prize for uh the chocolate chocolates and berries wrap um i just gotta write that down make sure i get that correct um okay so moving along the next winner yeah we have quite a few winners this is so exciting uh, the next winner is the winner of the Knitter's Pride Interchangeable uh, Symphony Wood Needles. And they are ranging from US size 4 to US 10 or 3.5 millimeter all the way to 6 millimeter. And so this is the prize. And the winner of this prize was number 47C. Um, Wanlin, I do believe. I will put the name down here. So congratulations. I know who you are, <laughs> but congratulations on winning the Knitter's Pride. And the last winner, I do believe, uh, for another mini skein set, this beautiful autumnal mini skein set, along with a project bag that says, um, Nitrovert, and I love it. It says, but willing to discuss yarn. <laughs> Nitrovert, but willing to discuss yarn. And this goes to Snow Baby 312. So again, mini skein and bag to Snow Baby um, 312. So all of you, the last prize that we had, uh, that I have to give, there might be one more coming in the works. I'm not sure. Editing Linda here. Yes, there's actually two more prizes. So I'm going to insert a little video clip here from Susan of Wild Cottage Ireland Knitting for her prize. And then we're going to come back to me of the past because I'm Linda of the future um, to do the last prize. So two more prizes. So I drew my winner from Instagram and I drew a winner named Anita. I'm putting her Instagram on the screen now. And she is actually located in Austria, from what I can gather. So I've chosen a EU-based dyer to give her the gift certificate to. Finally, Fibers, who is located in Ireland, and I have bought many, many of her yarns. I really love her yarns. She has 10 different bases. There's like lace weight, BFL silk. There's mohair. There's, you know, your regular four pie sock weights, BFL sock high twist. I've used a lot of these. She has singles, DK, sports. Yeah. So she's loads of colors, loads of bases, and she also does dye to order. So Anita, let me just show everyone because I love finely fibers and you know I love to uh, share about Irish based dyers and Irish yarns. She has got, for a lot of her colorways here, she's got swatches, which I think is really, really handy. But I just would encourage you to, not just Anita, but anyone who loves yarn, to go to the finely fibers website. And have a snoop around because there's some lovely yarns. Or don't if you're trying to stash down. Don't. I have used that fire pit several times. And I these are all like if you were doing a sock. So obviously it knits up a little bit differently um, if you're doing like I often do shawls. I have a lot of these colorways. Look at that leprechaun colorway. Perfect for Patty's Day, which is coming up soon. Anyways, I am totally not sponsored. This is all just my own doing uh, because I love this uh 
this dyer and these yarns and I, I am excited to share the love. So congratulations, Anita. Give me an email um, with your details and I will let you know. I will give you a code for the gift certificate so you can do some shopping on the Fine Leaf Fibers website. But the last prize, which was the big prize for the Mary Minnie Mel was a gift certificate to your yarn store of choice up to $50 Canadian equivalent. I don't care where you are in the world. So <laughs> $50 equivalent, you just tell me what yarn store and I'll make arrangements for there to be a credit in your name at that yarn store. And the winner, drum roll, Mary Death. Mary Death. So um, Mary Death, if you want all of the winners, I'm so excited that you participated. Thank you so much. From Susan and I, we are we had a blast uh, looking at all the projects. We could probably do better at commenting on the projects. But hope you enjoyed that. Hope it inspired you to use some of those wonderful minis that we had and uh, that we all love to collect. And on that note, that's the winner. So yay, Merry Mini Mel 23 is done and dusted and we're on into a new year. So... Um, what I am going to do now before I go into the 2020, no, I'll, I'll leave it to the end. We've got two more brand new uh, make-alongs happening this year, and I'll save that to the end because uh, I just want to go through some high-level details. So let's get into 2023 uh, and my intentions for 2023 because I have to laugh. Intentions are always honorable, aren't they? Okay, so I had nine intentions for 2023. Um, one of them was to make wearable knits. I think I succeeded and I'm going to go through those today. To use stash. I think I did a good job of using stash. That does not mean not buy yarn. That just means use my stash wherever possible. Uh, try and find more challenging knits. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but I was really looking to challenge myself to use um, different types of knits, not necessarily just different stitch types in particular, like more cable or lace or something. Uh, learn new skills. So this could be techniques. This could be other fiber arts. Um, I will say right now, I learned quite a few new techniques, which I loved. I dabbled in some new fiber arts because spinning definitely fell into there. So, and I did a little bit more sewing than I have done in the past. I'm not going to go over that today. Um, and I think I did really well. So in terms of learn new skills, I give myself a good grade. However, I also deduct points because do you remember at the beginning of the year, I said I was going to do the Master Knitters program? I started it. I have a binder. I organized myself. I started swatching and then I didn't. So <laughs> epic fail on the master's knitting program. It is still my intention to do that. It's not fallen off the radar. It's just a wee bit delayed. Um, I wanted to explore new fibers and new blends. So new um, wool bases. And I did. And actually, I don't know if you can see right up here, I have a basket and I'm not going to go through it today. But that was part of Sweet Paprika's partnership with Small Bird, the Small Bird Workshop on Vancouver Island. And they came up with something called the Beyond the Merino Club. And so it was a subscription. Every two months, you got two skeins of yarn that were not merino. <laughs> so, so I have six sets of yarn up there that I'm gonna share with you at a later date uh, that are different sheep breeds. So I think I did a really good job of exploring. So I'm not only gonna talk about them, but I'm also gonna knit something with those. So that's kind of a goal. But I'm gonna talk about 2024 in another video. Oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. Number six intention was do some charity knitting. I must be the world's most selfish person in the world because I did zero, zero charity knitting. I'm such a bad person. 
So that's something I'm definitely going to keep on the list for next year. Eh. Number seven was make spent space for special event knitting like Advent and Stephen West's MCAL. I absolutely did that. I do not know that I'll be doing the MCAL again in 2024. That has yet to be seen. Number eight was to tackle some languishing whips, and I did. I'm happy to say I finished slip extravaganza. Did I get as many of my languishing whips done as I wanted? No. And last but not least, my ninth intention was to inspire one person to knit. I don't know that I did that. <laughs> I have no way of measuring that. Whenever you put down intentions or goals for yourself, make sure that they're measurable, <laughs> achievable and measurable. What is it? Simple, measurable, achievable, timely. Uh, yeah, smart, smart goals. Oh, and relevant. R was for relevant. So inspire a person to knit. That is super aspirational, but I have no way of knowing if I ever achieved that. So I'm going to say no. <laughs> but those were my intentions. The one I want to focus on today is the wearable knits one. Um, because that covers off a couple of my intentions. So I thought it would be fun for me just to do some, some wardrobe changes and go through the different sweaters that I knit in 2023. So hopefully you're into that. Uh, so stick around and I'm going to go over them briefly. It's not going to be a long winded conversation about each sweater, but I just thought it would be fun for you to see sort of in a, in a sort of like a fashion show, uh, the sweaters that I knit in 2023. So first up, and not in any particular order, I'm sort of doing them a little bit chronologically, but not 100% because I start things and finish things at different times. But this is my Mabel Pullover. So this is a Coco Knits pattern, and it's called Mabel. And I don't know if you're familiar with Coco Knits, but it is a whole sweater workshop um, by Jennifer uh, Weisenberger. Pardon me, Julie Weisenberger. I apologize, Julie Weisenberger. And this is a whole, a specific type of construction. And so I certainly wanted to try this, and this was about learning new techniques. And so this is about getting the perfect sweater fit. And so this is my Mabel cardigan, or not cardigan, my Mabel pullover. It has a scoop neck, which is not my normal type of scoop, scoop neck. Fitted shoulders, so it is not raglan and it is not drop. This is a completely fitted shoulder and it's like a contiguous shoulder, but it's a little bit different in the construction. And the yarn that I used was, what was the yarn that I used? Malabrigo Mecha in English Rose which is an Aran weight, if I'm not mistaken, an Aran weight single ply yarn. And I had to alternate skeins because it is obviously um, hand dyed. And you can notice that the color here is different from across here. So you cannot alternate skeins with this pattern because of the construction. You start with the back, you do a back panel to about here, then you start picking up stitches and building in a shoulder that then works into the front. You're, you're increasing along here and then you join in the round. And so you can see basically, you cannot, well, let's put it this way. You probably could if you kept uh, switching your yarns at the end because you're knitting flat but I don't like to do that. So it's not that you can't, it's just that I don't like doing that. So you can definitely see that there's a dye different. It doesn't bother me at all. And then I started alternating skeins once I was knitting in the round. And so I absolutely love the fit of this sweater. It fits well in the underarms. This type of construction for me is great if I'm putting the sweater underneath a vest or a jacket because I don't have that whole raglan or rounded yoke excess fabric here that doesn't fit into my jacket and like it's fitted across the bust and it has enough positive ease around the waist and then it is just a two by two rib on the bottom which matches the cuffs the yarn itself does pill because it's single ply but because it's done at such a tight weave the pilling isn't that bad and from what i understand of what i've read is it will stop 
once it's given off um, its initial fluff, it will stop pilling as much as it is. What else can I tell you about this? Um, yeah, so again, the indie dyed yarn, you might want to do uh, a um, commercially dyed yarn if you don't like to alternate skeins when you're uh, knitting flat. Um, and other than that, I love this sweater. I would make this again in a different yarn for sure. Um, and again, using the Cocoa Knits uh, methodology, that was all new technique to me and uh, a new new construction. So yay me, love this sweater. Okay, my hair is going to get very messy doing this and I'm going to be because I am literally like ripping off the sweaters and putting the new sweaters on. <laughs> This is my favorite things sweater number 14. Absolutely love this sweater. This is my bougie sweatshirt. It has got, uh, it is a drop shoulder construction. You literally, um, how do you, how does this one work? You start knitting the back panel, then you pick up stitches along a shoulder seam that's actually on your back shoulder. You knit this front panel with increases, then pick up the stitches on this side, do this panel with increases, then it meets in the middle, then you knit in the round. It has a split hem. Let's see if you can see that better with my white t-shirt. It has a split hem, very deep hem, and the sleeves you can alter any way you like, but it's got quite a large ribbing on the sleeves as well. I like my sleeves just to go straight out. And that was what the pattern sort of denoted. Um, the, the neck, you then pick up the stitches around the neck to do the ribbing around the neck, which I've never done. I've never done a V-neck and I've never done ribbing around a V-neck. But I also um, did an Italian, <coughs> excuse me, Italian bind off, which is very stretchy. Um, which is absolutely fun. It's easy to do, not difficult to do. It's really good if you need a stretchy bind off. What I would say is this particular sweater, just with the way I knit it, um, a couple of things I would do different is I would probably pick up more stitches along both shoulders to make the back of the neck narrower so that it doesn't gape so much because the weight of this sweater, I knit it in um, Anzula Dreamy, which was the blue, which is 100% merino, and in the blueberry colorway, and then held with two strands of Knitting for Olive silk mohair in the navy colorway. And I got this beautiful, beautiful midnight blue uh, bougie sweatshirt. I absolutely love it. I wear it to death. It's super warm, it's super warm. Um, and so what I would do differently is I wouldn't make the V as deep as it is. I probably wouldn't do an Italian bind off because it's stretchy and just lends itself to the sweater sort of sagging open. And I would probably close up the back. I would not make a smaller size. I like the oversized this is supposed to be a bougie, bougie sweatshirt and it's perfect. And the drape of this, and notice notice the color difference. I did alternate skeins all the way through, but when you have indie dyed yarn, you still might get that. So you gotta be comfortable with it. But I absolutely love this one. I loved it so much, I knit a second one. So this is my second sweater number 14 which I'll show you is a little bit different in that I did exactly what I said I would do. I, well, actually I only did two things differently. I kept the stitch count that I picked up on the sleeves exactly the same. However, I, I eliminated or I just didn't do the last three increases on either side and I just joined it at that point. So that was one thing I did. The second thing is I just did a regular cast off on this one. And this V-neck to me is, is a better fit. 
the blue one comes right down. So you have to wear a t-shirt underneath it. I'm still wearing a t-shirt underneath it, but um, this is my second sweater number 14 using all scraps, all single ply, held um, double or held with two strands of knitting for all of mohair and just cream. And I got this sort of color blocking idea from my girlfriend, Jackie, who in full disclosure, got it from Kim, from Kim and the Kim and Jana podcast. So um, just a great way to use scraps. Uh, I did the same sleeve. I love these sleeves. Um, I didn't have a lot of yarn left and I did not do a split hem on this one. So this is truly just a sporty sort of sweatshirt and I absolutely love this pattern. Again, it's my favorite things and I knit it in a size two. Both of them are size two. So it shows you how oversized they are. I think it only came in three sizes, one, two, and three, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I knit the size two on both of them. I absolutely love both of them and I would knit it again, honestly. Okay, so this is my next sweater and this is my fourth ranunculus. So this is a winter version of the ranunculus. Again, I've done straight sleeves and then I just a two by two cuff. Um, what did I do here? I think, let me just look at my book here because I do have all my, I cast on 65 stitches. I did sort of the size three, but the ranunculus, depending on what yarns you use, it looks different every single time. And no split hem, I just let it fall as it may. Um, and again, this is actually hobby yarn. So this is, uh, what is this? This is Mayflower Cotton Merino yarn from Hobby, or Hobie, depending on how you pronounce it, held together with um, deep stash mohair um, from Not House Yarns in a lilac colorway. And so the so the denim blue and the lilac just turns out to be a nice genie sort of colorway. And again, very comfortable because it is 50% cotton. It doesn't overheat. Um, it's absolutely a beautiful sweater and I wear it all the time. Again, bougie sweatshirt kind of thing. I think Casey Apple <laughs> from Young Folk, Knit, Young Folk Knits started that whole bougie sweatshirt thing. I don't know if she did, but I'm giving her credit for it anyway. So that was my next knit. So my next knit, I'm happy to say, is a deviation from a pullover. It was a pullover pattern that I steaked. So new technique to me, steaking. This pattern is Tin Can Knits Flax. You can see the garter on the sleeves. And the yarn that I used was Noro Silk Garden in a whole bunch of remnants that I collected. Um, and what a fun knit, what an absolutely fun knit. So new to me was sticking, new to me was doing the, the band around the neck and that and the buttons I got from Fiber West. I love the fit of this. I love the weight of it. It is an absolutely perfect cardigan. Um, and it is super colorful, super fun. Sleeves don't match. As you can see, I did my best, but I ran out of all the purple and the blues in the sleeves. But if you have scrappy leftovers, that flax pattern not only works well in a pullover, but it works really well in, um, in making a cardigan out of it. Um, all of my garments where I start in terms of choosing a size is for a 40 bust if I want it to be zero ease. And I kind of am comfortable with 43, 44 inches if I want some positive ease. Um, so except for, um, unless it's an absolutely oversized sweater, I tend to choose somewhere between uh, no ease and four inches of ease. And that's what this one is as well. And I absolutely love it. So there you go, the flax. Uh, pullover steeped into a cardigan. 
So I made two summer knits this year. Uh, this was the first one that I, no, this was the second one that I made, which is a Samantha Guerin. You're all familiar with this pattern. It's the Salty Air Tea. And I love this pattern. I would knit this again, and I would definitely use this yarn again. This yarn, look at the drape, it's just lovely. It is Juniper Moon in the Solstice Base in the celestial colorway, which is a very soft lilac-y gray, and absolutely love this pattern. What I would say, I, my little embellishment is I did a split hem. What I would say about this pattern is the neckline for me was way too wide. And part of that was because the new technique for me was an alternating cable cast on and an alternating cable cast on is also stretchier. Uh, I think you can do a tubular cast on or an Italian cast on. Those are stretchier as, as well as the alternating cable cast on are stretchier uh, cast ons. And so it was already a wide neck and then with a stretchy sort of um, cast on, it just got really, really big. This neck is still quite big for me, but I have crocheted it. Like I have every third or fourth stitch, I've crocheted two together. So I did a rib of crochet around to hold it in and it's still large. So just be conscious of that if you're making this pattern. It is a beautiful pattern. Uh, I didn't have to do any modifications to it at all. Um, and again, I chose the pattern size that was a 43 and a half inch finished bust. So, and that gives me just the right amount of positive ease in the waistline, but I don't have all this bulk and bunching um, under the arms because it is a top down um, circular yoke pattern, but absolutely love it. And I, I've worn it a ton going on now. Okay, last knit, last knit of the year. Um, so this is the Luminous Summer Tea by Mini, Mini Me Knit Design. Had to think about that. And I knit this in a worsted weight silk, which was the Wonderlust, Handmaiden Wonderlust in the colorway Maldives. Uh, love the yarn, love the way this turned out. I made zero modifications. Um, the yarn, however, being variegated, you don't see that there's a little bit of lacy, there's a few eyelets, it's not much. It's like one or two rows of eye, like tiny, tiny little eyelets along um, the neckline and also the way the increases are in the pattern, it creates a bit of a design which gets totally lost with this particular yarn. Um, I again chose the pattern size that had a finished bust of 44 and a half inches. I think that was a size three. And the pattern is actually for a DK. Um, so did I use, I used the recommended, the recommended needles. And so I ended up with just a little bit more positive ease than the pattern probably had, but it worked absolutely perfectly for me. So I was very happy about it. Same issue um, regarding the cast on. It wasn't an alternating ca cable cast on, it was just a regular long tail cast on, but really wide neck. So just be cautious of that. If, if I were to knit this again and the salty air again, I would probably cast on for the smallest neckline and then work a row of increases to get to the right stitch count. Because I'm conscious like it's at the edge. So I mean, any slippage in the bra is going to show. So it's a little wide for me, but still uh, because of the weight of the yarn being worsted, it sits really well. So love it, love it, love it. And it's silk, which is nice. Love it, love it, love it. And would knit it again for sure. It's super easy. You could make it as long as you want. You could do a split hem. You could add cables if you wanted. It's a really good, overall general pattern for a summer tea. So that wraps up my knit. So let me just go back into my stripes and we'll keep going on. So I 
hope you liked that overview of my sweaters. I did a lot of other knitting, but it didn't really translate into sweaters. I actually cast on 15 garments and only finished nine. <laughs> so some got frogged, some, some are still whipped, so I'll go over those at some point. And then I did a whole bunch of other things that were not sweaters, obviously. So now what I would like to do, I'm, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, now what I want to do is just talk about the two make-alongs that I'm going to be hosting for the whole year. And this is to incent me as well, because I have been wanting to knit Ellie of Skein Deer's festive yoke sweater, the full on color work. And I want to stick it in a cardigan. I'm, I think I want to stick it in a cardigan. I'm not sure. But I, I've, I've had the pattern forever in my library. I bought it when it came out and I've always wanted to make it. But to me, it was, first of all, it's all over color work for an entire, I mean, you could just do the yoke, yes, but I wanted to do it all over. But it was such a big nut to chew. I needed to wait for a brand new year. <laughs> but what I've decided to do is I have broken the pattern down into 10 manageable chunks. At least I think they're manageable. So January, just to give you an example, and if anybody's interested in this, let me know. But um, I started, so we're going to have a Mal. I digress. It's called the Festive Sweater Mal. Make along. It can be knitting. It can be crochet. Whatever fiber strikes your fancy. And it doesn't have to be Christmas. It's just a sweater that is festive. It's a celebration sweater. So it does have to have some party or seasonal celebration elements to it. So it could be snowflakes. It could be, um, it could be Christmas themed. Absolutely. Uh, it could be anything with glitter. You know, if you're just doing a beautiful sweater that you want to add some embellishment for an evening. So festive. The key word is festive. It could just be that it's a festive color for you, like hot pink, or uh, you're doing it out of silk because silk is festive. It's, you know, it's more for going to a gala or something in your mind. Don't have to go to a gala. <laughs> um, but just something festive, something that brings you joy and something that's festive. So we're not talking woolly wool sweaters unless there's a festive element to them. Yes, you could do the halibut sweater, for example, but maybe only if it's, you know, the fish have bobbles, you know, <laughs> I don't know, something that is festive. So any sweater and you just have to finish it, it must be finished by the end of the year. So this is a new cast on, um, n am I going to say whips? Okay. I will say yes to whips as long as they're less than 50% complete. How do you place that? I don't know. So you figure it out, but it has to be finished by the end of the year because we're just going to have a, I'm going to put a chatter thread on Ravelry and a finished objects chatter on a uh, post on Ravelry, but you can post it either in Ravelry or on Instagram under that hashtag festive sweater mal, uh, 2024. Um, my festive yoke sweater that I'm going to be doing, I have broken up into 10 parts. If anybody's interested, I'll happily share. But January is about swatching. Yes, I'm going to swatch because I'm using a yarn I've never used before and I don't know what happens to it. It's a, it's a lichen and lace heather sport. Um, and so my festive yoke sweater is going to have Christmas trees and baubles, but not traditionally Christmas colors. It's going to be in grays and creams and, and browns and soft pink and, you know, a few other different colors. So the motifs will be festive and Christmassy, but the colorways are not. So there it gives you a hint. It can be a festive sweater without being true Christmas, uh, etc. It could be a birthday sweater. Say happy birthday. That's festive. <laughs> happy Easter. Festive. <laughs> um, and it must be adult sized. No children's garments. This is an adult sized sweater make along. Crochet, knit, whatever strikes your fancy. The second knit along, not knit along, make along, is the All Creatures Great and Small. And I know that's not a new type of thing, but for me, 
I got such a kick out of making the gnomes and I know the nutcrackers aren't animals, but the mouse. <laughs> animals, animals, whether it's amigurumi, if it's animals in a, in a knitted pattern that is mittens, hat, shawl, cowl, sweater, doesn't matter. If it's a crocheted amigurumi, if it's a crocheted mitten, hat, shawl, um, sweater that has animals in it, it could be a stuffy, it could be a gnome that's an animal, an animal gnome, it could be Carrie Lord's Toft animals, anything that is, has an animal. It's gotta have an animal, animal. All creatures, great and small, it's gotta have an animal. <laughs> so, and again, um, yeah, I think that's the only, that's the only criteria. And it's gonna be all through the, through the year. You've got all year to do it, post as many, many finished objects as you like. There will be a chatter thread in Ravelry, but there will be a finished objects in Ravelry for that and finished objects only on Instagram for both mouths. Finished objects only. That way uh, it's easier for me to figure out winners at the end of the year. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> um, but those are the two make-alongs and I'm making them all year long I am looking at giving quarterly prizes. So just a random draw at quarter's end. Uh, what is that? March, June, September, December. Um, just and you because have, you won in quarter one, you are still eligible to win in quarter three, two, three, and four. So I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible. So again, I am not a channel, I am not a maker. This isn't a channel that, that is a business. I don't have any kind of a yarn business. So any gifts or whatever that I'm giving are simply out of my stash. So I just wanna make it fun. So that is what we're gonna do for the two make-alongs. That said, there's a few make-alongs that I wanna participate in that I thought I would share. Um, oh, before I, before I digress, let me go, I'll be right back. Sorry about that, folks. I know I don't normally go off and leave you. I'm sorry about the lighting, I can't. I'm not gonna apologize. It's beautiful sunny weather and it's shining through my window, so there you go. Okay, one of the things that came to me, and I have to share this, you know, regarding all creatures great and small. <laughs> so my knitting group on Fridays, ladies, hello. Um, we all watch, well, not all of us watch, but I think, I think most of us watch Needles at the Ready. So Kevin and Ray. And we got together last week and we were talking about, you know, as you normally do, what podcast were you watching and what, what tidbits did, did you get out of this podcast or that podcast? And we all, almost simultaneously, but if not in actually verbalizing, well, then in our thought process, we were thinking about, oh, Kevin and Ray had this really cute pattern called that they were, had worked on, which was the emotional support chicken. <laughs> now, this is all over the YouTubes now. This is all over the YouTube. So it's nothing new, but the emotional support chicken. That would qualify to go into all creatures great and small. So in my, the, the, the mal that we're going to do, the make along that we're going to do, I have started mine. I've got to get this right. I have started mine. And I have done the back end, it's all getting blown out, oh well. The back end of my chicken, <laughs> and I'm just using scraps. I am using all different weights of yarn too. Like this is a super chunky bulky, this is a super chunky bulky, this is Aran weight. Um, and I'm just using whatever scraps I have because we're all making ourselves an emotional support chicken. And if you decide to do that, let me take a look. I'm sure if you follow Kevin and Ray, you're all in. Um, but this is a pattern by the Knitting Tree, and it's available on Ravelry. Super easy, uh, but how cute is this emotional support chicken? I mean, how cute is that? Like, who does not want something like that to hug? So, thank you, Kevin and Ray. Not that they ever watch my channel. But anyway, it, there is the inspiration, and that is really the fun of watching podcasts. Because you seriously get inspiration from everyone that you listen to. It's like going to a knit night when you're not even at a knit night. So that's why I love the podcast, but I wanted to, to say that. So that would absolutely go into all creatures, great and small. Uh, who else uh, is doing 
uh, a vest along. So Knits and Pieces, Noelle and Kelly from Knits and Pieces are doing a vest along. And I think it goes until March 31st. So knit any vest. I am searching for yarn for that. And the Knitting Posse, so Kim, Kate and Laura are doing a collaboration with Thea Coleman for a Thea Coleman garment as a whole. And I know Thea Coleman has some beautiful vests. She's even got one that's just plain stockinette that I really, really like. Um, so if you are interested in doing a vest, well, those are two knit alongs you could join. One is Knits and Pieces, Kelly and Noelle, and the other one is the Knitting Posse. So Thea Coleman, uh, Thea Coleman themed. So if you chose a Thea Coleman themed vest, you could go into both. I'm just saying. So that was one of the, the, um, make alongs or two of the make alongs that, that caught my eye that I thought, oh, I vests are on my list for 2024. Not trying to give too much away, but I would like to make a vest. Um, so some people call them slipovers. I don't know. I call them vests. Anyway, so those are the make alongs that I thought would be fun to, to do. Um, so that is all the knitting content I have for today. And I think I'm going to call it there. Um, the next time I will go over a little bit more of, uh, some finished other, other activities in 2023 and wrap up 2023 as a whole and launch 2024. So I hope you found that fun. Uh, we'll have chatter later on again, cause I don't want this to be <laughs> hours and hours long, but I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly had a great time sharing my main garment knits with you and the make alongs. So congratulations to all the winners. And I hope that each and every one of you are enjoying the start of this year. I hope it's going well for you. Um, and if it's a little bit tougher start than normal, well, hopefully it's going to get better very, very soon. So on that note, I hope you all have a wonderful day. I look forward to talking to you again very, very soon. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.